Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go. I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey, everyone. And thank you for joining me as we break down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.3.FR.1.1. And it says to represent, which means that we're going to model and interpret, which means that we're going to write it and say it and be able to look at a fraction and be able to write it and say it. But we're focusing on unit fractions, which are written in the form of one being in the numerator and really anything can be in the denominator, although there will be some limits and we'll get to those. So we're going to represent these unit fractions as the quantity formed as one part when a whole is partitioned which means split or separated into n equal parts, n again being the denominator. By the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public. And in these episodes, I'm just showing you how I break down the standards for about half of the video. And then in the other half of this video, I will show you what resources you have access to that are strategically aligned to this standard. So hold tight, let's break down the standard first to understand it and then we'll get to those resources. Okay, in the example it says that one fourth can be represented as one fourth of a pi, which would be parts of a shape which will represent usually with an area model, or one out of four trees, which would be parts of a set, or one fourth on the number line. So we're focusing on area models, we're focusing on number lines and sets. Okay, let's take a look at these clarifications right here. We definitely need to be using manipulatives and visual models when we can, and in taking on the best, we will focus on those visual models. Um, hopefully you have access to manipulatives that you can tie into these video lessons. Again, we'll be representing as parts of a whole, parts of a set, or a point on the number line, which is a part of a whole in a number line. And here's what I was talking about with our denominators being limited to two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, 10, and 12. So for instance, if you see a fraction that has sevenths, you can go ahead and tuck that one to the side. Don't worry about it having a denominator of seven. Try to focus on limiting to these denominators right here. So what other benchmarks connect to this? Well, 3.fr.1.2 the next standard will be the sum of unit fractions. So we're talking about unit fractions specifically in the standard, and then the next standard will practice adding those fractions that three fourths is equal to one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, the sum of unit fractions. That's the next standard. Then we will move on to reading and writing fractions, which we will also talk about, of course, with this one. But I do love that there is a standard dedicated solely to just reading and writing fractions. 3.fr.2.1 will plot, order, and compare fractions with the same numerator or same denominator. And then in 3.fr.2.2, that will be our equivalent fractions unit. Very, very heavy with visual models in third grade. All right, and they say that the term that you need to know would be a number line like this. We've got a whole and how to mark up a number line will be something that we focus on in the standard. Where are they coming from? Let's pay attention to our vertical alignment because in second grade, 2.fr.1.1 and 1.2, we practice partitioning shapes into equal sized parts. I believe that the focus was on circles and rectangles and stuff like that. So hopefully they are coming to you with that. But if not, you can always go down to that second grade standard if you need that vertical alignment. And then in fourth grade, fr.2.1, um, that is decomposing fractions, so breaking it down into the sum of other fractions. And then FR.2.2 in fourth grade is where we practice adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. And eventually in fifth grade, we will practice with 
adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. This is a really important lesson, focusing just on the unit fractions. It tells us one part of the whole. It's cool that we're focusing on that. All right, now to the purpose and instructional strategies section. These are some of the things that jumped out at me that I thought were important. It says that we're focusing on students being able to understand that unit fractions are the foundation for all fractions. That's what I was saying before. Also making note that fractions are numbers. They are. They represent values. They are numbers. Here it says that in grade two, they did partition circles and rectangles into two, three, and four equal size pieces, and we will be bumping that up with this benchmark. For this standard, it is important to show models that are um, that do have non-equal parts, so we can see them as non-examples, and that unit fractions are defined as one part when a whole is partitioned or split, separated, in any number of equal parts as long as it's inside of those denominator limits, and we want them to conclude here. We want them to come to this conclusion that the greater a unit fraction's denominator the greater the number of parts, also that they'll be tinier. For instance, halves are much larger pieces. One half is a much larger piece than one twelfth. One twelfth is one out of 12 tiny little pieces fitting inside that same hole. So we do want students to come to that conclusion. Visual models and manipulatives are a great way to make that happen. Here they say fraction strips. I definitely recommend if you have fraction strips to break them out. We will be focusing on visual area models, number lines, and sets of objects in taking on the best, and I'll show you that. Now, even though students might come to you with some background knowledge on fractions, fractions in general do present a lot of misconceptions. One of the things is knowing the difference between the numerator, meaning of the numerators, and the denominators in fractions. Students might misconceive that the smaller the denominator, the smaller the piece, or the larger the denominator, the larger the piece. And this will be a wonderful way for them to see that one third is way bigger than one tenth. And you have to think about it from their perspective that when they've been comparing numbers, three is less than 12. But when we're seeing it as part of a whole, cutting it into three equal parts rather than 12 equal parts, it kind of changes the way that we see numbers. Um, also here, students can misconceive that all shapes can be partitioned the same way have students practicing with shapes other than circles, squares, or rectangles. Now I am going to let you know that in Taking on the Best, we do tend to practice a lot with rectangles because they are easier to separate, but wherever you can partition them into different shapes, do that. Um, I just pointed out that I love this instructional task because it incorporates everything here, and we do have a math mission that is similar to this. Here where you incorporating that area model, incorporating the number line, incorporating the sets. So take a look at that so you can see how the, what the standard looks like in action. And then here says which one shows one fourth shaded. We need to be thinking in terms of the students of why might a student select this one. They might select it because there's one shaded in and then there's four other parts. So this is a misconception in action right there. Okay, and I think that's it for seeing it in action with what the Florida Department of Education has released to you. But now let's go ahead and see what resources you have in your Taking on the Best membership that are strategically aligned to the standard. So here we are on the website. We're going to go to Members, Enter here, Taking on the Best. We're in third grade. Click on the FR strand. And we're going to click on 1.1, 3.fr.1.1 that is representing unit fractions. Okay, so as this loads up, your first page that you are brought to are your bronze resource, ooh, your bronze resources. And you can see here that these are the video lessons and student guides, basically your notes for this lesson, okay? It gives a student an opportunity to watch the video and copy down the notes onto their paper. Then you'll notice we'll be model on a number line and also as a set. And I'm noticing by looking over at the student page that they, ha they have mostly the same fractions, which is awesome because then they get to see those same fractions, those same unit fractions, because notice they have one in the numerator represented a variety of ways, except for number two says one fifth. Okay, so those are your lessons. If you are wondering, how do I represent this as a fraction, as a number line, as a whatever? Do you know? <laughs> Gonna go ahead and play. I'm ready to teach y'all. Um, if you need help prior to 
rolling out this lesson on any of these, feel free to watch these student videos to help you think about how you can roll this out in your instruction as well. Now, I'm all about making math fun, making it click, and making it stick. So in these video lessons, these bronze video lessons, the whole point is to make it fun and make it click for students to walk away from these saying, okay, all right, that's the clicking. And then the silver helps to make it stick. So let's go to the silver plan. All right, so you can go back to those bronze video lessons at any time, but the silver plan has extra practice, extra printables involved. Let's open this up to see what it says. And you can see the very first page that comes is the bronze video lesson. It's everything kind of together, so it makes it easier for you to download and print. Okay, so first we'll watch the video lesson on area models, and then we want to know that our students have it. So now they have their extra practice representing unit fractions using an area model. Okay, and there is an answer key for this as well. After that, we've got the other video lesson on a number line, and then extra practice to see if your students have it. Then representing unit fractions as a set video lesson and then extra practice. It just follows the video lesson, extra practice, video lesson, extra practice format until you get to the end. And then we have a math mission, which is a math task. It says you are given the unit fraction one fifth. How can you represent this fraction as an area model in a shape other than a rectangle? How can you represent this fraction on a number line? create a real world scenario to represent this fraction as a set. So again, it's putting it all together as one and a math task and it nails this standard, which the focus is on unit fractions. Okay, and then my favorite, the Math Misconception Mystery Video Lessons right here. Um, you can see that it is a video and all you do is go back to this page, you click play right there, and I will guide your students through the entire process. These are wonderful to roll out as a whole group. Um, oftentimes, once teachers use these as a whole group, some of them, some teachers like to roll them out in small group once they've set the expectations for students and their students get the hang of the process of the whole thing. Um, let's go back to what you do though. So again, I will guide students through this entire process. I will say, okay, here's your problem for today. Create a model to represent one 12th. Your students will then work together or independently to solve that on their own. And then they will watch as four other characters solve that same problem. Those characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes with silly accents and three of the characters make a mistake. One of them is correct and students have to really pay attention and watch closely to see who is correct, who is not, and why to totally dissect it and analyze it. It's an awesome chance to see your students engage in math discourse, engage in friendly debate. It's super duper fun. And honestly, once you play one of these math misconception mystery videos, your students are going to beg you for them. I'm telling you, I have experienced this and I, whenever I go to visit schools, I, this is the first thing that teachers say is, oh my goodness, my kids cannot get enough of these math misconception mystery videos. So that is awesome. Um, after they watch the videos, they will discuss and analyze the answers. They'll say the most reasonable answer belongs to character this and why, and then they will analyze the method of the other students, okay, in their detective report. All right, your answer keys for all that that we went over in the principles. So for your bronze, you have your video lesson, and then when you have the silver, you have that extra practice element with the math mission and the math misconception mystery. Then we have the gold plan. All right, you can go back to those bronze video lessons or the silver extra practice at any time. But with the gold plan, you also have a mini assessment specifically aligned to this standard. So you can see we've got a variety of question types here. All right. There you go. Take a look at those all about that unit fraction. Got your answer key right there. We have this episode of Breaking Down the Best right there with all of your resources. So you can click on it, watch it, learn about the standards, see what you have access to. It's all right there. That's one of the perks of being a gold member is you have it right there. Now these videos are also on YouTube. They just contain ads. So just a perk of being a gold member. 
But the main reason that most people select the gold plan is because you wanted access to McCarthy Math 155. You can see that this is a daily math intervention that I created that is specifically aligned to the Common Core standards. Now I'm saying that just to be totally honest, this was created for Common Core. We used it when we had the Common Core standards in Florida. And now we have the best standards, hence taking on the best. But the 155 stands for 155 video lessons. And there are a lot of video lessons inside of McCarthy Math 155 that you can use if you need to pull out that extra practice. So let me open it up and show you for third grade. So you can see here we've got place value. If your students need help with place value, finding the value of digits, you have 13 video lessons there. How about addition with regrouping, subtraction with regrouping, or reading word problems and trying to figure out which operation you use? 16 video lessons inside there. Multiplication, 13 video lessons. Division, 15 video lessons. And these are more about like an intervention style that we're doing. So if we're looking at fractions right here for unit eight, we have 24 video lessons on fractions, fractions on a number line, comparing fractions, which is coming, and fractions equivalent to a whole. So when we open this up, we'll see right here that the first video is an introduction to fractions. Then we have modeling fractions, being able to read it and create an area model. So you can see we're still practicing that. You notice in for third grade, there's a time at the bottom. Every single one of these for third grade, one of these video lessons has a time problem. It's called a moment in time because as third grade teachers, we know students come and they have to know how to figure out the elapsed time, but when they don't know how to tell time, that makes it kind of difficult. So every one of these videos has a time practice problem at the end of it. We've got modeling fractions, reporting fractions as a shape. So you can see that there's nothing really specific to a unit fraction, although I'm pretty certain that when we see one third right there, I will identify in that video that it is a unit fraction. So it's kind of tying all those pieces together. So if you are looking for tons and tons of video lessons, the gold plan with McCarthy Math 155 included is the way to go. Um, just be careful, just know your standards, pay attention to these video lessons and you will be solid. I hope that you found the information in this episode helpful, that now you understand the standard and that you know what you have access to in whatever membership you have, the bronze, the silver, or the gold. Before we go, let me remind you that what you choose to do every day with your life, it really does matter. Thank you so much for all you do, dedicating your life to helping others, to, for helping your students. Thank you for stepping up every day, showcasing what the best version of yourself looks like so you can inspire your students, your children, to step into the best version of themselves too. All right, I know you're busy, so I will let you go. And I cannot wait to see you in the next Breaking Down the Best episode. So until then, bye-bye for now. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best. <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now. Bye.